Hi guys, welcome to Live with Brie, Live with the Mayambo Tram. Look, sorry, ngasigi videos ni mayamang ang dain hanto. Sige videos ni dagikita na kena ba mong da tawag ni hain ay kanje. Ngasigi videos ni hajik tobacco, amasung cancer, amasung jajat ki laina, jajat ki cancer, kai cancers laina, jajat ki addiction. Yam na wang ba laina mayam lai ba, addiction yam na wang ba intoxicants mayam market la ibo sing zigi manda kana na na gahay dun na Manipur, Manipur da amasung India pum ba da pag sandok na jat kraba organization amakak. Minggu ni panjang pada attack, high level organisation sih kita founder ama sung, kau kita active member, ani mak, ani ga, wali sana bagi tanjang kau kau juga kita nang sih kita video sih, semasa bani, video sih mak hatarak, mak hatarak poi na, ay, mayam da, kau tu tamba, semasa juga. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And here we go. The first guest I have here is Dr. Sumida, the founder of Attack. Welcome to my show, Dr. Sumida. If you can hear me. Thank you for joining in. And the second guest I have here at the side is Dr. Dika. Dr. Dika, welcome to my show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And the next person I have here in line is Dr. Garima. Welcome to my show, doctor. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. So uh, going in for the first question, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, AirTag is something uh, which is known uh, nationwide by now, but uh, just for those people who don't know yet, what exactly AirTag stands for and what exactly is the motto and what exactly AirTag is work working for? Uh, the question is for uh, Ms. Dr. Uh, Sumida. Okay. So AirTag was started back in 2014. Me and my friends, we were in college. And uh, I was a dental surgeon then. Uh, I was doing my graduation. We saw a lot of patients uh, who came to our OPD with oral cancer. So the entire paraphernalia was about oral cancer. You know, the big talk was around cancer. And uh, whenever we took case history from patients, the most important thing that they reported was tobacco use. So, so I started to wonder uh, why people are not going behind the reason. Uh, why are they just treating this symptomatically? And uh, that was when uh, I was doing my post graduation, and uh, I started my NGO. Uh, so we would work throughout the week, and then on weekends we would take our small car, our set of instruments, and we would just go to villages. We would screen people uh, for oral cancer and then uh, give them cessation advice. Uh, we started our cessation centers in Noida uh, with the Uttar Pradesh Tobacco Control Board. Uh, so we started two of those. We got a lot of support from the government. We got medicines, we got IC material, and we distributed them to the public. And then if anybody was uh, positive for cancer, uh, we would refer them back to the hospital and treat them at a low cost. Uh, so this was only oral cancer till about 2015. Uh, from 2016, we also started doing breast cancer, cervical cancer, and now we are into a full range, a spectrum of non-communicable diseases, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, cancers. So now we've taken it up. Uh, and very recently I've joined RIMS. Uh, so I've shifted to Manipur. Uh, so two of my colleagues are back there in Noida. Uh, and I am trying to expand this and work from Manipur. Perfect. Before you, before I go on for the next question, I'm just going to ask you a little bit of the um, side question as well. How do you like Manipur so far? Is it good? Manipur, I think it's a beautiful place when you come from a place like Delhi. Uh, it's a little quieter, right? Sorry. Yeah, it's a little quieter. A little quieter, yes. The people are more peaceful. The place is peaceful. There's no honking. There's less pollution. Uh, so I'm enjoying every bit of it. I would say. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for uh, Dr. Dika. Uh, yeah, coming in the next question um, for Dr. Dika. What exactly I would like to know is like what what's going on in the world right now is as the COVID thing. Everyone's really frightened and scared about this COVID thing. So, um, you know, a little bit of the personal experience as well. I've had a lot of cough. I don't smoke. Uh, I've, I've never smoked in my life, but I've had friends who smoke. I have had relatives who smoke, but uh, you know, smoking kind of have that tendency of coughing all the time. And um, that's something when you Google what exactly is the cause of coughing, they, they scare you with all these C words, right? The cancer things. 
So what exactly, how, how, how exactly is this tobacco and the cancer thing going on together? Because there, there are so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, viral news going on viral in WhatsApp as well, saying that tobacco or smoking kind of cures um, uh, uh, the COVID as well. So that's something I, I think that's not the right one, but I want an expert to say it. So that my, that's my first question for you. So how, how, how will you take on that? Um, it's a loaded question, but very relevant in today's time. So I just want to start off before COVID became the first, like an emergency, a public health emergency in the world. Tobacco has always been the number one public health enemy for uh, us professionals working in the medical field. Uh, first, looking at the statistics, uh, till now, approximately uh, COVID has... Uh, the mortality rate or the, you know, how many people COVID has killed is uh, around, uh, uh, I'd say, how much? Five lakhs, is that? What is it currently? And, but looking at the statistics annually, how much, uh, how many people tobacco kills uh, is uh, annually, and the entire globe is around 8 million. And in India itself, you know, being the second most uh, consumer, uh, second largest consumer in tobacco products. India, it kills around 1 million people uh, annually per year. So that uh, stark difference uh, is uh, like people would say, you know, maybe it's not relevant as to you pointing out tobacco being of greater importance, but we shouldn't forget what things are taking a back seat in this COVID world. Coming to your uh, uh, point where you've raised, you know, people look up coughing uh, on uh, the web and they get scared because it says cancer. Uh, it's when you take a cigarette out of a cigarette pack, that pack itself says this is injurious to health and it may cause cancer. So I, I still uh, don't understand why people fear the word cancer. Uh, also, uh, the uh, way tobacco is affecting uh, the COVID transmission is not just for because of smoking, uh, or it's also because of a huge uh, majority of our population uh, in indulging in smokeless tobacco habits also. I think smoking takes a bigger chunk of the industry, but smokeless tobacco is equally more prevalent and even larger and wider uh, distribution in India and other Southeast Asia countries. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, WHO has warned us uh, and everybody against smoking since a very long time, but especially in these COVID times, uh, they have also told everybody to you know, uh, stop. They have advised everybody to stop smoking. There have been various reports coming up from uh, France and Italy, especially the Eastern countries, the European countries. Uh, where they say uh, that nicotine might be beneficial for you, but that all gets lost in translation where people just take a chunk of the article of the research and they don't go into depth of the article research. Uh, then uh, coming to the nicotine part, uh, it just, there's a hypothesis. This is a current hypothesis which says that smoking, viral infections and uh, age and other factors in Increase now. I'm getting a little clinical here, uh, but this is what I think everybody should get cleared out in the head. Increases the ACE2 receptors, which are there in your lungs, and that's where the COVID viral particles go and join. So the more receptors you have, the more number the, you're, you're at a major, you're at an increased risk for COVID-19 to happen to you. So uh, some researchers and which are not peer-reviewed articles, uh, which say that you know maybe uh, nicotine might block those receptors, uh, but you should remember that a cigarette or, or the smokeless tobacco does not have only nicotine. It has a variety of other stuff and a variety of carcinogens, things which cause cancer, especially which have been proven to cause cancer, uh, especially in them. Uh, so baseline. Smoking is injurious to health. It does cause cancer. And that's what WHO has advised. Basically, tobacco decreases your immunity. It's been known. Smoking, smokeless tobacco, it decreases your immunity. It causes major comorbidities like uh, diabetes, uh, heart, uh, hypertension, uh, especially cerebrovascular accidents like stroke. So it affects each and every part of your body and also your lungs, which are like the primary uh, barrier between you know uh, COVID and you. Like, 
your uh, immunity system. So uh, it destroys each and every, uh, affects each and every part of your body. And uh, there's a major relationship between uh, people, and we've seen it on the news also, we've seen it on the articles, the research articles, which say people with comorbidities are getting affected by COVID uh, a much, uh, at a much higher rate. So tobacco also increases your chances of having comorbidities. So I think there's an indirect causal relationship between COVID and tobacco, which I don't know why people need to understand that smoking, smokeless tobacco, any kind of tobacco, be it hookah, ends, uh, be it uh, even the chillam chutta or the paan, uh, supari, uh, kyanda. Uh, tobacco is not good for yeah, health. It's just not good for your health. Yeah, thank you, Dika, for that answer. I, it really widens my knowledge now. So what exactly, I'm just going to uh, uh, make it a little bit more clear for most of the viewers. So, Dr. Dika, I'm going to say that 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 I'm ขวีริสเซสแมนตอรีบดมาที่อมคักไฮบดีกะดังกานะบะปาอมคักยาเวนไฮบดูดฟอกัสตอรกะมายามนะยูแคนโนสโมกตอนนิงบะมายามนะข
So uh, for oral and breast cancer screening, we have seen till now 15,000 plus uh, people, which I think is a good number. Then we also have some tobacco suggestion centers uh, in collaboration with the Gautam Bhut Nagar uh, government. <clears throat> so in that we have touched lives of uh, 6,000 plus people. We have counseled them. And if 10% uh, uh, or 15% also uh, is on the way of quitting the tobacco, then it's a success for us. So we are dedicatedly doing uh, uh, tobacco de-addiction in those centers. Uh, we have weekly basis. We are going to weekly basis on them. And then <clears throat> in our clinic and in our EU center also, uh, we are providing tobacco de-addiction de counseling. So this is a hierarchy. This is all yeah, that's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, what you are saying? Mm -hmm. Alcoholics Anonymous. So uh, last year we have also started uh, a group uh, in our center. They have started coming. That is Alcoholics Anonymous. So they, this is a group of people who do peer counseling for each other. Because uh, many people think that if they are going to doctor, they the doctor will not be able to understand their situation. They will prescribe things and they will just go on the theory part. So that is a peer group counseling thing in which there are some alcoholics who, who had quit alcohol and is able to uh, understand their own feelings and uh, make other people quit alcohol. And we are also moving towards uh, making partners with Nicolene. Perfect. Thank you so much for the answer. That's uh, quite long. That's really informative as well. So. Uh, as uh, promised earlier, I'm coming to the next part of the video. So, what exactly happened is before I, you know, this uh, before uh, before I film this, uh, the moment we decide we're gonna make this thing happen, uh, I post something on all my social media asking for questions from the potential viewers uh, for things they would like to know from the experts. So I have quite a lot of questions, which I have just uh, uh, inverted pyramid down to just five of the questions, and I'll be spreading some question to each of you if uh, you don't mind answering. Uh, so the first question is for um, Dr. Dika. I'm coming to you, Dr. Dika. First question is for Dr. Dika. So I'm just gonna read it out for you. Uh, the first question is. Um, I am from Imphal West. It's one of the districts of Manipur. Uh, Manipur, I want to ask what are the sim simple ways to examine ourselves for oral cancer? I hope you pick my answer. Thank you. So he's asking about how to examine ourselves for oral cancer, and that's once for you if you can make it crispy and short. Yeah. I think it's a very good uh, step to start off early uh, because they say uh, the earlier you catch on with oral cancer symptoms and signs, it's better. You have a greater, uh, we have a greater chance of uh, treating it and you have a greater chance of uh, surviving it. So great, uh, there are stages of cancer, I won't get into that. The basic question I'll address, uh, basically uh, imagine, uh, I think everybody should do it uh, you know, a self-examination, it's called a self-mouth examination, so that you know what's normal and what's abnormal. Like, if you know that, that's great. Uh, and you can spot the symptoms or the signs earlier, and you can receive treatment earlier. The earliest, the better. That's why they say prevention, better yeah. thing to yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, all you need to do, it's very simple. Uh, they say it's a two-minute checkup. Uh, you can be faster if you practice. Uh, stand in front of a mirror, and uh, just it should be well lit so in case you don't have uh, good lighting uh, take a torch or tell somebody to hold that torch for you uh, you start off with like imagine your mouth being a closed room and you have, you have to look for cobwebs now like you have to look okay. at each and every place so you start off with your tongue uh, people when you know they start off this uh, they think mouth is all teeth and that's what even dentists are taught but you have to start off with each and every aspect uh, okay. So, uh, coming, uh, you start off with your tongue, you bring it out, mm -hmm. and you. Uh, there's a video also, if you can show it on screen, that would be really nice, I can send sure. that to you. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, you start off with your tongue, you see the up, upper surface and the lower surface, even below your tongue. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, uh, then uh, you 
take it left and right if you want to hold it well and good left and right because especially the borders of the tongue are very uh, susceptible to uh, getting these things uh, also then you check if you want you can use a wooden stick or you can use a spoon or you can even use your own fingers uh, you check the entire uh, oral cavity which is your cheeks your lips you upturn your lips down turn your lips and you see each and every part especially uh, and then especially the upper part which is your palate where your tongue touches every time or you know when you're eating a pizza and it gets burnt that part also you have need to check and in case if you feel comfortable which is also advised depress your tongue and look and say ah widely and then also look into if you can properly into the mirror the best is best solution is you go to a dentist and you get yourself checked even a good surgeon now what exactly are you looking for in your mouth i'll list those signs and symptoms uh, so for smoking tobacco and smokeless tobacco i'll differentiate them because uh, when people are uh, using cigarettes those lesions do not generally appear uh, that fast that's why they say you know lung cancer and esophageal cancer or different kinds of cancer which are associated only with smoking rather than smokeless are harder to predict harder to analyze harder to you know that their prognosis is not that great because they we can't be caught in the early stages uh, so uh, smoking tobacco or uh, the cigarettes the hookah the ends all of those have a greater chance of burning uh, so anywhere any place which is burnt you should uh, see it properly you should let it heal you shouldn't smoke you shouldn't smoke at all but at least you shouldn't smoke for the time it's healing uh, if it doesn't heal in 14 days any ulcer any burn any injur injur in injury to your uh, mouth uh, doesn't heal in 14 days you should report to the doctor immediately that's a danger sign uh, there are also other things uh, which are associated with smokeless tobacco especially being uh, since it's heat which is getting produced in your mouth there is dryness of your mouth which easily leads to blanching which is whiteness of your entire uh, mouth easily your, your gums and your mouth are coral pink that's what they say that's what they call it it's called coral pink in the, uh, our terms it should not it should be pink and it should not be white so we have seen in many smokers that it it generally becomes white it becomes hardened it becomes dry it is like a concrete like appearance especially on your palate uh, coming to uh, apart from these all things which are especially seen in uh, smokers uh, there is also which is seen along with smokeless tobacco which is the white and red patches uh, which are pre cancerous in condition which can be easily treated if caught at an earlier stage uh smokeless tobacco especially has another um, entity which is widely known in southeast asia it's called uh, submucous fibrosis oral submucous fibrosis in which your mouth refuses to open up widely like you can't like if i'm opening like i can open four fingers at least ah so you do a self test at home especially with your grandparents or you know using a uh, maybe that arika nut that supari or the pan or even uh, chewing gutka just make them uh, do this four finger test if they can't open their finger uh, the mouth fully for the four fingers it's a danger sign and they need to report uh, to because the uh, there there are some chemicals in the arika nut the pan the supari and the smoke uh, smokeless tobacco gutka which is there uh, which is also addictive and at the same time it uh, uh, it uh, closes it restricts your mouth opening so apart from that white red patches uh, should be immediately uh, seen by a doctor or a dentist and also follow up is also very necessary any uh, loose tooth any extra oral abnormality where you see you know you have asymmetry in your face there's border uh, there's some lump lesion anywhere if you're not feeling if you have difficulty in swallowing difficulty in uh, gargling difficulty in eating food that's also a danger sign uh, apart from that uh, any bleeding sources which are which aren't stopping you know there's excessive bleeding in your mouth those are also danger signs of having oral cancer and self check is important because the health is in your own hands perfect thank you so much that's quite that that was not expected i thought it would be a really short one but i had so much to dig inside and thank you so much for the time and uh, my next question is for dr sumita the founder of atac uh 
it's a really long question. It's a little bit of an experience and a little bit of uh, something I would like to ask as well. Um, so the question is, I am still a student. I'm one of those person who has cancer phobia, cancer word phobia, which is also I'm one of them. Um, whenever I have toothache or mouth ulcer, my friends come to the conclusion that you might, you might be having cancer always. So how do I deal with this fear? And uh, with plus this question, um, I have had friends in my school, universities, and even my workplace as well. Whenever they have something, uh, something off in their tooth, right? The the word that, that comes in your mind is cancer, and it's not just even if it's a cancer or not. That fear really haunts them every now and then until a doctor's or an expert clarifies them. So I'm just gonna ask uh, this: How do you deal with this fear or phobia? I think uh, more than doctors dealing with this phobia, the patients need to deal with it. So thanks to Dr. Google, uh, you know, you Google and you look at the symptoms of any disease, uh, you know, majorly the symptoms are repeated. And once you read them, and even if you are fatigued and you don't have appetite for days, people think, oh, I have cancer. So thanks to Dr. Google and the half-baked knowledge that comes with it. Uh, but you have to understand uh, specifically because I'm a dental surgeon, so I'll talk about oral cancer specifically. Uh, the oral cavity is a very kind cavity, okay? So as Dikha was also mentioning, cancer doesn't just happen, okay? It, it, it's not like boom, cancer. It's not like that. It takes time, okay? So what we develop is called as precancerous lesions, which are not cancer, but they are symptoms that are towards cancer. Like as Dikha said, these are white or red patches. Uh, this may be a soreness in your mouth. This may be an ulcer. It may be a reduced mouth opening. So what I'm trying to say is that this is not cancer, but if you continue the habit of tobacco, it turns into cancer, okay? So the oral cavity gives you time in between. Uh, but the best way to deal with phobia like that uh, is to visit a doctor and do not believe in what friends say. Uh, do not believe in what Google says because it's a lot of half-baked knowledge and uh, not every lesion is cancer, okay? Even if precancerous lesions are happening in the mouth, if you stop tobacco habit and take the right medicines, it even reverses back to normal. So that's the good news. Uh, so I think uh, the youth should not uh, be very scared of the word cancer because most of it is curable. Even if somebody has it, you don't have to think that it's a death sentence. It's curable. Uh, and also the fact that uh, uh, do not go into half baked knowledge. I think that's my answer. Perfect. Thank you, Sumita, so much uh, for that answer. It's really, really good because uh, that's something I really wanted to ask as well because I, whenever I have anything, not just for the oral cavity as well, whenever I have any lump in my body, any parts, I kind of have uh, things because I, you know, like uh, like I think cancer is something that have touched every families, so that have gone in the brains of every families that this is something which is uh, which is next to a near possibility. So it just fears everyone, not just. Uh, not just everyone, I think it's and everyone. So thank you so much for clearing that out. My next question is for Dr. Garima. So, uh, this one is a very, very, very relatable question to most of the husbands or wives or the families. Uh, I think uh, this will be uh, helping a lot of viewers as well. So the question is, um, my name is uh, Dimoni Tokchom from Taubal. Taubal is one of the districts of Manipur. Uh, I would like to share an ex experience. Um, just gonna, I'll, I would like to share an experience first, and I will follow up with a question. I won't disclose my husband's name, uh, but he's a chain smoker. Um, pretty good. Uh, good that he doesn't smoke inside the house, um, but his mouth and hand smells smells like smokes, and and he's around the babies. I, I don't exactly know how old the babies are, but I think it's just the babies. Is it is that dangerous for the kids? What do I do? Thank you. Hope you'll answer. And I like your videos, beer. And that was the question. If you could answer the best, honor will be all served. Thank you. All yours. Thank you, Demoni, for your question. And uh, I hope uh, many many people have many housewives, many wives that have this type of questions in there. 
so and uh, yes now nowadays females are also <laughs> taking big part in smoking and uh, also taking smoke test back so first i would like to uh, draw your attention towards that uh, there is also types of smoke so we just know that i am smoking i am taking everything but there are also types of smoke there are three types of smoke so first i would like to speak that so the first hand smoking is <clears throat> that uh, i am smoking and i am inhaling everything every chemical in my own lungs so uh, and in one cigarette there are around 7300 to 7 chemicals and in around 70 chemicals are carcinogenic which means that it can produce cancer in one spot and this is not about the whole pack of cigarettes it's just about one cigarette so if a cigarette pack is contain around 10 uh, cigarettes in one pack then you can multiply the chemicals into tens so this is uh, that is why we are saying this is highly dangerous to smoke then coming to second hand smoke so second hand smoking is the mixture of the exhaled smoke and uh, the substances that are lying at the receiving end of the smoldering end smoldering end is the burning part of the cigarette which is which is which enters in the atmosphere when we smoke the puffs so it enters in the atmosphere and is inhaled by others who are present in the vicinity of the smoke so like if i am smoking and you are uh, sitting here so you are carrying you are also inhaling all the chemicals of that cigarette which i am then there is also a third type of smoking third hand smoking which is the contamination which is left on the surfaces when the second hand smoke is cleared like if i smoke outside so now coming to that question uh, that demoni has asked so if the husband is smoking outside and uh, if someone is around him then obviously they are also inhaling the same chemicals as he is inhaling in his own lung but if he is coming back to the house at okay i am not smoking in front of my wife or my in front of my babies but unknowingly he is carrying all the chemicals with him to the house so the third hand smoking means that when i am smoking the contaminants are also on my uh, like i made a kurta right now. so it's on my kurta if i am sitting on a chair it will the remnants will be on the chair also yeah if the remnants will be on my hands on my lips so when i am entering the house and going to the bed then what's the first reaction in the after spending whole day outside in the office when uh, we are coming back to our bed so the first reaction is to hold up the babies right then babies are tend to put everything in their mouth so the husband must be wearing shirt and all that so uh, the uh, maybe he can kiss the child the child can take his collar into his mouth so in that way he is transferring all the chemicals to the baby so yes it is dangerous that uh, he is smoking and is coming around the baby without cleaning himself first so obviously uh, you should start about uh, uh, making him quit smoking and uh, tell him all the all these type of smoking which i just told that first and second and third and uh, that yes it is dangerous for the baby so and uh, uh, the effects the consequences which smoking does on our body are devastating you know so obviously the person who is inhaling in the second hand of passive smoking so so the person who is inhaling is also getting same kind of conditions in the body obviously it will not be rapid because we are not directly smoking but yes with a mean course of time we will also get uh, those type of consequences like uh, uh, if a smoker if the smoker uh, it increases for a smoker it increases 50% the heart uh, it increases the risk of getting heart attack it increases blood blood pressure and heart rate it increases 50% of getting a brain stroke then uh, obviously oral cancer is a main thing it can also cause stomach cancer plus ulcers so all these things can happen in passive smoking few course of time then one more thing i would like to for the pregnant females if a pregnant female 
is smoking or someone is smoking around us then is equally equally uh, bad for their fetus that for their bum uh, the baby can have premature birth which is not good every time the baby can be a low birth weight then there can be issue of cleft which is the when lift is uh, lift is above and uh, it uh, it merges in our upper part so then um, miscarriages are also there so obviously smoking does cause life pain events in our life so and they, if they want uh, like of course maybe as in manipur also and in manipur only and they are also there so we can help in giving tips and tricks for tobacco addiction for her husband we can tell her how to uh, make him good we can help him mm. yeah coming to the next question this will be last but one question um if you can make it a little short as well uh this is a really relevant question as well my first question is uh how to stop the intentions of using smoke uh using tobacco and secondly how to stop my friends from having the intention i guess so that's uh, that's that's the question that is for dr dika uh i think it's a very good question because uh we we've seen that uh, in so many of our cases the major factor as to why they started smoking and how did they start smoke how did they start smoking or even smokeless tobacco is because when they were young their friends also used to do it so they it's peer pressure or is it the societal uh, image of how cool tobacco is that got them into this uh, but let me tell you one thing they they say uh, that the best time to quit smoking is to never start and if you have started and you're like you're in the habit of smoking or smoke less tobacco the best time to quit is today so i think it's all about how you perceive it how you perceive where you're reaching with this habit is it a productive habit or is it just destroying you inside and you don't know it yet uh i think uh coming to uh as to what some there's some myths associated with these things as to you know it gives me energy it gives me it increases my concentration it uh it helps me uh, aid in digestion these all it's like a image created by the industry or maybe uh you know by generations of this habit that has made people more susceptible to falling into this habit so it's very easy to you know take your first puff it's very easy to take that first good kaka uh, you know packet but the from that one cigarette the time it becomes 10 cigarettes or maybe 20 cigarettes yeah. you don't realize how fast you're falling mm-hmm. into that you know all you have dug up yourself uh also uh as i said it's all about if you've started it i think you can stop it too it's you who controls yourself not a but or you know a tobacco packet it's all in the mind it's all in the mind yeah that was a really nice uh, answer um, I, i really like the financial understanding part because uh, to the viewers as well Uh, Manipur, I'll, I'll just explain a little bit of Manipur. Uh, smoke to Manipur. Smoke is what I mean. I don't know if there is a lot of people from the financial perspective. I don't know if there is a lot of people who are consuming it. I don't know if there is a lot of people who are consuming it. I don't know if there is a lot of people who are consuming it. I don't know if there is a lot of people who are consuming it. Uh, ya matina kanu ta wai tare consume ta ba koi pe ham na mang ba yam na mang tak pa ya ba kanu ka intoxic kanu ka koi ba mara mo ra ga sang ka tina tana financial perspective se ngata na masi koi smoke to holding ida pe sa ke am sat pe koi to ke am mang ja ba ya ke na na khal laga hai tare tok pa gi tok na ba gi hai tare excuse amoi u u bi ai do tok na bi khol ai mo insu financial perspective gi sina bi ai ai smai tham ja ge expert na smai tham bi ki Okay, coming to the last part of the viewers' question, and I'm gonna put a little note at the end as well from my side. 
Um, the last question I'm throwing from whatever I got from the viewers is, thank you so much for giving, uh, give, thank you so much for giving the opportunity. I'm a big fan of you, Beard. Uh huh. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> my question is: Is tobacco really bad? If if tobacco is really bad, why don't we just ban the manufacturing company? That's a huge and tough, sweaty question, is, uh, is in my perspective, because you're gonna start speaking the whole, the whole dirty parts of inside, because that's what the viewers see as. And my part of the question is, um, you know, ATAC is spreading all, acor all across India now, and the, you are personally in Manipur as well. So um, what are your plans from the perspective of ATAC that you are trying to spread in the form of awareness, in the form of uh, voluntarism, in the form of uh, spreading um, whatever uh, whatever ways you possible? So what what's your next step as far as the, the geographical Manipuri or Manipuri, Manipuri is in concern? That is my question, so all yours now. Uh, so to answer the first part, which is the dirty part of the question, uh, the second part is, of course, easier. But the former question is a little difficult. Yeah. And we get this very often, very often, that why aren't we banning tobacco as it is? Uh, so we have to understand that tobacco is a multifactorial industry, okay? Tobacco comes into agricultural crops and it is one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, yielding cash crops for farmers. So the point is that there are hundreds and thousands of farmers who are farming this crop. And it's very difficult for the government to provide alternating, alternate farming solutions to these farmers. So, you know, uh, and not even that. So uh, we, we just don't look into, the, look into it as an entire spectrum. Uh, you know, from the day the plant is sown, uh, you know, there is a manufacturing unit that is there. There is a packaging unit uh, with BD, it's the rolling unit. So lakhs and lakhs of people are employed. So if we just ban tobacco one day, boom, uh, you know, we will be, unemploying lakhs of people and that would cause a rebellion and that's why that's the single uh, most important factor that has been put up by various people uh, as to why we can't ban it the second part of this multifactorial uh, paradigm is uh, the revenue that is generated so we all think that the revenue that is generated because of tobacco is pretty high and the government is really earning a lot of money I would like to take your attention to a few digits here. So the numbers are that the, the revenue that the government collects from tobacco products is about 7,000 crore. And the loss that the government has, the health loss, I would say, the, the health economic burden is about 16,000 crores. So, you know, that's a myth that the government is earning a lot of tax. The, the, you know, that's, that's kind of a misconception that's there. But yes, you have to understand the dirty politics that uh, tobacco lobby is a very strong lobby. Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, I have no fear in naming the company, you know, ITC, uh, their shares never go down, you know, and all this ATA that they manufacture or biscuits that they manufacture, this is all camouflage. Okay. This is all camouflage. The biggest addictor is nicotine. It's more addictive than cocaine, heroin, marijuana. Like nicotine is at that level. Your cigarettes are at that level. So the addiction factor, the, the industry manipulates you so well. And this time's theme is also how to protect the youth from the industry. So, you know, we, we are talking all about cessation and we are counseling our patients. You know, the global quit rate like, is about 2%. So if you're counseling 100 patients, you were only able to help totally quit two patients. So it's, it's a little disheartening for the doctor also. You know, you are putting so much effort, but the industry puts in more effort. Now that's the, that's the uh, twist here. So even if you've quit tobacco, you are their customer for the next seven years. You know, that's how they play around with it. And uh, the, entire, the entire effort that the government has put, uh, if we kind of just ban it one day, uh, believe me, the underground mafia will become so strong. This will be smuggled so badly uh, because there are about 30, 33 crore people 
who are addicted to it. So just imagine now your cigarette, which costs you 11 bucks right now, is costing you 100 bucks. So just imagine the mafia becomes so strong, the black market goes like crazy, haywire. So you have to understand that there is a balance that, that has been there for years and years and years. So this is not just today, okay? Uh, so yeah, so the farmer point, the revenue point, the addiction that this has and the mafia, uh, they kind of don't let you. But the good part is, now that COVID has happened, we know that if we spit in public, so if I'm chewing my tobacco and I'm spitting it in public, I am transmitting the virus to the community, okay? So a lot of state governments have banned smokeless tobacco spitting or smokeless tobacco in some form. So the government is taking a direction. They, they're taking a step in that direction. And I, I'm, I'm very honest, uh, you know, the government has banned ENDS, that is the electronic nicotine delivery uh, system, which is, which is essentially your e-cigarettes, right? So the government has totally banned e-cigarettes in India. So it's not that it's not going in the right direction, but you have to understand that there are various factors involved. They cannot just ban it in one day. But uh, yes, I think uh, the, the effort is in the right direction. Perfect. And to answer the second part of your question as to what are my plans uh, of expanding in Manipur, um, I'm very, very excited to work in Manipur because uh, all throughout my life, I've been the city girl and uh, most of it was in Delhi and I've led a very happening life. <laughs> uh, and suddenly I'm here and I see the pain of people. I see how, uh, I mean, there's no train connectivity, oh God. So, you know, people are uh, using conveyance as only air or only road to travel to various parts. And I've seen that there are big hospitals in the state, in the, in the Imphal region, I would say. Uh, I haven't traveled very extensively, Manipur, I haven't done that, but I see a lot of hospitals in Imphal. But I still see that a lot of people are taking their second opinions back in Bangalore or Chennai or Delhi. Uh, so I would like to, I'm not committing, but I would like to, I would love to help the people uh, by opening telemedicine centers and maybe I can partner with the big hospitals like Artemis, Midanta. Uh, or, or the big ones where the patient is generally going for a second opinion. And, uh, you know, they can teleconsult uh, with the doctors there and Manipur patients can just sit down here and take their second opinions and they don't have to pay extra just the consultation fees of the doctor. And of course, I would love to open my tobacco cessation centers here and start my activities in the public health sphere. Uh, when the COVID situation gets a little better, <laughs> of course, that's, that's, that's true. So, uh, yeah, just waiting for the right time. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's really um, motivating. That's really insight as well. Um, so um, before I say thank you and say bye-bye to everyone here and to the viewers as well, uh, I just want to wrap up and I just want to throw a little light here. Um, Dr. Sumida has been in uh, Manipur for a while now so uh, let's end with a little fair note you know uh, how much Manipuris have you learned so far by the way doctor <laughs> wow my colleagues are laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> don't worry so yeah kidang, kidang, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's 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 not really bad you don't have much accent when you speak Manipur you speak just like the locals uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's do something um, um, for the m m Miss Dr. Dikha as well, because uh, Manipur there are a lot of um, associations and organizations, small organizations that bans tobacco and any sort of uh, this kind of addictive substances in Manipur as well. People are doing it, and, and you know that Manipur is a dry state as well, and uh, everything is super banned, uh, even though it's still in use. So. Um, I'll give you a little slogan that everyone uses quite some time. It's been a while or it's been forever like that. So, um, uh, we don't have, uh, we might be having an exact word for uh, this kind of substances, but we kind of use it in the, the Hindi word, Nisa. Nisa is a Hindi word, I guess. Nasa. No, yeah, Nasa, and uh, we say Nisa. <laughs> it's a little bit of a same thing. We don't have the exact. Nasa, Nasa is like the, those, like whatever, right? Yeah. 
So yeah, so I'm gonna say, don't use the intoxicants, right? You try it in the first go. I'm just gonna go boom. Just listen to me carefully. So I'll just break it down. Mayam nisa sizinaganu. I lost you after Nusa. <laughs> okay. Nisa, what? <laughs> okay. Mayam Nisa Sizinaganu. Mayam Nisa Sizinaganu. Perfect. Now that was a, that wasn't bad. Like uh, yeah, I was just saying it like do not use the intoxicants. Yeah, that's 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 widely used uh, vowels, I guess, for as far as all these intoxicants are concerned. Next, coming to Dr. Garima, I'm just going to end with a very light note with you as well. Oh, I'll, I'll break it in yeah. two parts. Nisa Sizin Nabana. Nisa Sizin Nabana. Sizin Nabana. Okay, that, that's not bad. That's, that's very healthy. Hakjang Sokhali. Hakta Sokhali. Well, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, that's not bad. Thank that's you. not bad for the first drive. Thank you guys so much for doing this. And we know that it's a uh, world tobacco no a day, so it's just um, we are gonna stand together to say no to tobacco. And I, I know I, I'm, uh, you know, I think each and everyone have been affected in the form of first person, second person, or the third person, as mentioned earlier as well. Everyone's been a victim of tobacco so far, even though we are not a fan of the tobacco, we are still the victim. Um, uh, but I'm just gonna wrap up saying that uh, thank you guys so much for uh, all those who are sticking on till the last part of the video. It's quite the journey. It wasn't the, something we planned um, um, of having the length of this much uh, for this video. But thank you guys so much for sticking till the last moment. I really appreciate you guys. And if you guys have any friends, family or anyone around you who are capable of stopping, I think it's high time we will do it today. In fact, right after the video, I guess. And it's not just about you stopping or you saving your family, it's about saving your community because even if your family is super strong or super safe, I think one infected bread in your neighbor can spoil your whole family as well because as mentioned by the experts, it's not just you smoking and you dying, it's just the cosmos that affects. So please, it's time, it's high time for everyone to understand the causes and the cure and complete understanding of what exactly tobacco is, it's not just what you see in Bollywood movies is not just what you see in the Gucci Gang movies. It's not just what you see in the Hollywood movies and all these film stars for all these fashion, uh, for fashionistas, I guess. And in, 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 in my last point, it's not something you use out of fashion. It's not something you should be doing because it's cool. Uh, it's something you should stop it because you're saving another life. Tobacco, as mentioned earlier, it's, it's really affecting uh, a lot of this um, newborn babies if it if it, it's been uh, it, if it comes in contact with the pregnant ladies as well so we are not just harming our generation but we are just i think going back in time as far as uh, human generation or human civilization put in concern so i would like to uh, take a nod for all these viewers sticking out until the last moment and just viewing it later on as well thank you guys so much for doing this and thank you to all the experts for doing this Thank you so much for sticking around for a while and I really appreciate your patience and uh, I would love to have you guys another time shortly in any of the irrelevant days. I would love to have you guys again once more. And if you guys have, um, and to all the viewers who have any questions that we missed out, if you guys wanna know anything anymore, please feel free to drop in the comment section down below. Uh, the doctors and experts will read you out personally or in any form of, or any ways. And thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's the live with Beer signing off. It's me, Beer signing off with the experts. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for a while. I love you guys.